Welcome back to the European LCS where Alliance is about to take on Fnatic. But here I am joined first by colorful player and coach of Fnatic, Alvar Arne Martin. Arne, when I talked to you first in London, you said that you were first acting more as an analyst before you moved into the house. What has changed for you and the team now that you're actively living with them? Well, now I'm actually like talking way more with the team. I'm actually watching every single scream. Uh, we are talking after every single game, what are the mistakes, what are the problems, or even like trying to work on, even, even if they win, I try to always point on any kind of mistake to work on that, to, uh, to like get closer to a perfection. Well, you also mentioned that you saw a lot of mistakes when you first started working with them. Obviously, they have been doing so well the, the, the last couple of weeks. How much of that do you attribute to your work with them? And what have been their biggest improvements? I think like, even though people are saying that I help a lot of the team, I, I kind of help them, but I believe it's more the motivation. Like right now, they, like when Walls is getting closer, players are getting closer, the motivation of the team is, is really high. I'm always like, I'm always like trying to help on that, like not only in-game stuff, like also about the motivation and about uh, how they approach every single scream and every single game. But still, I think their mentality changes a lot in the moment that the players are coming. And especially when I join the house, they kind of change the mentality and they are like working really hard to to get in the base shape. We talk about mentality and it's obviously crunch time right now and especially in this matchup versus Alliance. How have you guys been approaching this game? It's kind of hard to to like analyze against a uh, game against Alliance because they do always the same. Like I know how they think, but I don't know what exactly they are thinking right now because they always do the same. They go to a week. They train on a screams like a certain comp, and then they always pull that. Like last week, we saw how they play like Ragas top lane, Prevam jungle, Seraph uh, mid lane, and Corky in AD carry, and they probably like play that on every single scream, and that's what they're gonna play on the LCS. So it's kind of hard to keep track on them because they also like playing on on another account. So we kind of like really keep track on their picks. But still, I think we are in a in a good shape, and we did a really good preparation against them. So I hope my team my team is in a good shape for that. Well, your team certainly seems relaxed here behind me. Thank you very much, Arne. Thank you very much. All right, it's time to get into that matchup. So let's meet our casters, Joe and Trevor. Thank you very much, Chox. I'm Joe Miller, along with Quick Shot, as we head into the clash for first place as Fnatic take on Alliance. Now, this is the fourth and final time that these teams will meet in the summer split. Alliance currently hold the head-to-head -head record 2-1 over Fnatic, but this game is especially important for Fnatic as a win against Alliance will earn them an absolute heap of accolades. They will tie the wins and losses with Alliance for third and tie the head-to-head, -head, ensuring at least a tiebreaker for a potential first place seeding playoffs. They will also equal their winning streak from spring of last year at nine, game, uh, nine games and open the potential to break the EU LCS record. Just a little bit of pressure. records there. Now, before Fnatic can actually secure that win, they need to ensure that they don't make the same mistakes that they have made against Alliance in the past. The most notable being that base race drama from week four, where Fnatic actually had some control in the game, but they made a terrible choice to base race, and they gifted Alliance the victory. If we look at Fnatic and the way they play against Alliance a little closer, we can highlight the players that struggle to perform and those that do perform. So let's start with Soez and Yellowstar. They both have their worst KDA against Alliance in comparison to their scores against every other team in the European LCS. Meaning, so is in Yellow Star struggle more against Alliance than the other six squads. The man that does shine for Fnatic is Reckless. He's got a 12 KDA against Alliance, 16 kills, 10 assists, and only two deaths. And Alliance should be focusing all of their efforts on Reckless if they want to walk away with a win and break Fnatic's losing streak. Well, let's focus our attention here then to Alliance. They looked unstoppable at the beginning of the split, pulling away from the majority of the European teams until recent weeks where they had their eight game Eight seems to be a magic number here in Europe, by the way. Their winning streak broken by Fnatic, funnily enough. Alliance will want to break Fnatic's winning streak and also ensure that that head-to-head -head lead is in their favor going into the playoffs. Yeah, well, the importance of that first place seed cannot be understated. If Alliance lose this match, Joe, it'll mean that 2-2 two to two in the split and the potential for our lovely European tiebreakers <laughs> for playoffs. I do want to contrast one or two players that perform well and struggle for Alliance when facing Fnatic. Starting with Froggen, the positive. He really carries Alliance through their games. He's got 9, 2, and 15, which is his best KDA against any team in Europe. So Froggen is not under no pressure from either Peke or from Cyanide, and he's able to put up those strong stats. But on the other side of the coin is Nif. He really struggles when playing against Fnatic. This is his worst stats in the league. 
a, a moment ago we talked about how well Reckless plays, and it's partially due to picking off Nif multiple times. So Nif really needs to step up. And just in closing, Wicked on Gragas is terrifying at the moment. Uh, Alliance seem to have ironed out those patch-related problems that they've had uh, when they had that four-game losing streak, and I'm extremely interested to see how they handle 4.12. Well, there's a lot of respect between these two titans in the European LCS, but both sides believe they will pull out a win in today's battle. Fnatic has only one playstyle, and that's pick comps. I wouldn't say they are necessarily better than us, but I'm not 100% sure, and they are really good. And even if we are good, it's not really good for us to go equal late game, I think, as I believe that we have like stronger early game, so we should have used that fact since the late game might be a bit shaky. All their roles are solid, and they work well together. Like, they're a really good team, and I respect them a lot. The standings are still relatively close, so we have to take every game seriously, and especially against Alliance, since they're a good team, so if they are not well prepared, they can take us on easily. We have to beat them, because if we lose to them, and we end up in a tiebreaker with them, they will get the first spot, since they beat us three times. We don't want to end up tying with them for 2-2 score, so we're going to try our best to beat them. We have to defend our first place against them, and I'm pretty sure we will do that. Alliance had a bit of a slack lately, and we had a bit of a slack in the beginning. So maybe right now both of us are having a good time, so the game might be a lot better than you've seen before. We just have to crush an enemy in the game and make a statement that we're back. We're no longer here to lose games. Wow, very interesting to hear there from both sides. Some strong words even coming out from Shook at the end. I think you can feel the tension and the excitement in this game. Reckless in particular really encompassed it. They each had a little bit of slack, a little bit of downtime at different parts in the split, but they're both arguably at their best shape at the moment. Well, we'll see if Fnatic can continue that run of wins that they're on. But first of all, let's check out the starting lineup starting on the blue side with Fnatic. They are Soaz in the top lane, Cyanide in the jungle, Xpeke in the mid lane, Reckless on AD carry, and Yellowstar on support. And this crowd is definitely excited for this game. Alliance will be on the red side with Wicked in the top lane, Shook playing in the jungle, Froggen in the mid lane with Tabs. He's going to play like a man, man as well as Nip in the support role. <laughs> and in our featured matchup of the day, we wanted to highlight the junglers, starting with Cyanide, who's considered to be one of the most supportive junglers in the European LCS. Again, Shuk, who, on the other hand, is considered to be the hard carry aggressive jungler. But when we look a little bit deeper, it isn't exactly as clear cut, especially when you see that Cyanide, had, uh, Cyanide has more kills, less deaths, and more assists than his carry opponent, Shuk. Yeah, not only that, Cyanide also has a healthy GPM lead, over Shook, and I was personally blown away by the fact that Cyanide was stronger in almost every statistical category. So we dug a little bit deeper, and when Alliance and Fnatic actually stand off, Cyanide appears to forego jungle control in favor of lane presence. So this is exemplified by the fact that Alliance have stolen the second highest number of buffs against Fnatic than any other team. And Fnatic have stolen the least amount of buffs against Alliance in comparison to every other opponent. So in English, what this means, Shook <laughs> plays more aggressively in Fnatic's jungle than Cyanide does. And I'm interested to see which style will come out ahead. Remember, Shook played Riven last week, both games. Cyanide pulled out Maokai. So we may even see some new jungle champions from both of these players. Well, before we get to those bands and picks, let's check in and see which of these top tier teams you think will win. Not a surprise to me. 73% of the vote heading with Fnatic in this one. We'd also like to remind you that you can still get tickets to join us here in Cologne for our last Super Week of the season. And playoffs are also right round the, uh, the corner. For tickets to the quarterfinals, just head to lolesports.com and click on tickets for all of the information. And if you want to join us for the finals at Gamescom, check their site out for the details on how to get tickets. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be an exciting few weeks, that is for sure. All culminating with the top three teams qualifying for 2014 Worlds. It's all coming but around very quickly. a little quickly. far away. Yeah, you say that, but if you look at a calendar, you'll realize there's not all that much time between now and when that all gets started, which means teams have got to do work starting here today. First place clash. What are we expecting from Bands and Picks? So 4.12, once again, Lucian not available. We need to see where the AD carry focus is going to go. If Reckless gets his hands on Vayne again, the combination of Reckless plus Vayne is the highest KDA player to champion combo in the European LCS. It's only 48. So we need to see if you want oh, to do that. It's not very good, is it? Uh, with Lucian being away, it's actually the most played champion of both AD carries in this game, but we've already seen that they can play a lot more. Currently, we're seeing quite a bit of focus on the junglers. Lee Sin and Evelyn both taken away. Zereth removed from Fnatic as well. They don't want Froggen getting his hands on that. 
and Twisted Fate. So two mid lane champions from Fnatic with the jungle ban as well. On the other side, there's that standard red side casted in, the Evelyn. What will Alliance finish off with here? Will they go towards another jungler? Will they be looking to first pick the the one of the three top junglers, I guess we can say, remaining. Although we've already seen the likes of Riven, for sure, he's not scared to it. It has to out. be a consideration. Elise is, is Cyanite's most played jungler. And with it still available, the question is, what is first pick priority here for these teams? Gragas is up. Hell, we've seen a Maokai, and according to Zazus, is one of the preferred picks. You've, you've also got the likes of Fizz thrown in the mix. So it does look like the preferred top laner is where Fnatic are going. And why not? We've seen time and time again that Soaz, when he's on form, when he's feeling good, feeling confident, he can carry Fnatic at the best of times. That now leaves Alliance with possibly taking away that Elysia for the jungle. And we have to wonder whether AD carries will come a little further up the picking order today with Lucian not available. I completely agree with you. And I wonder, the, the biggest question for me is how comfortable and confident Shook is on a champion like Riven. Because if they allow the Elise to go through, and Alliance feel confident in their playstyle with those champions, with that Shook, for, uh, with that Riven, for example, he could pick it into Fnatic. He could run that particular pick. But it is risky. It is a champion that I feel if you don't really get ahead and don't get your items, you are fairly easy to blow up in team fights. Without a good chunk of attack damage, that shield from Riven is not particularly effective. So at the end of the day, no jungler's locked in yet. Oh, well, right. <laughs> just as you say that, an <laughs> insta lock job on the fourth for Cyanide. Other side though, it was of course Cogmo, the second highest played champion for Tabs behind the Lucian, and also Oriana, a champion which you always have to figure a uh, factor into this matchup. Xpeke and Frogan have both set records with Oriana when it comes to farm, and that would have been surely a high priority. On the other side, as I mentioned, Jarvan for Cyanide will see Thresh taken for Yellow Star again. So Lulu is still available, and earlier this week when we were watching the OGN quarterfinals, Lulu was first picked in a large portion of those games. It is also a champion that we know uh, has been run in the mid lane as well as top lane in recent weeks. The Jarvan being locked in in conjunction with the Thresh and the Gragas means that Fnatic have got a ridiculous amount of zone control. They can put the box down, the Cataclysm, the Explosive Cast, and it's going to be incredibly difficult for Alliance to position and potentially team fight very effectively. What Fnatic are missing right now is damage. So they could go for something like a Fizz Vein and use that zone control and peel to allow the carries and assassins to find kills or they're going to have to find some damage elsewhere because at the moment, I don't see how they're going to burn through Morgana, Oriana, and Riven Shields all at the same time. Well, we also do have to factor in that that Morgana could protect one person from the CC, but there's going to be a lot of in it there, uh, a lot of it in there for Fnatic's side. As you mentioned, Riven coming in third game in a row for Shuck. His first game, I think we can safely say, more successful than his second one, although that was, of course, a win as well for Alliance. But if you look at his, his pure numbers, 7-0-3 the first time he played it, albeit against Gambit, the team that are struggling right now, 2-1-6 against the Super Hot Crew. So definitely in form with this Riven, and he'll be happy that, you know, while at this point we do have a lot of jungle bands coming out, that he's always got that Riven there to settle back onto. Funnily enough, when we talk about the top three junglers, at least not selected in this one. But let's move on, because Fnatic got a couple of seconds left. We're going to see Jinx picked up here for Reckless in the AD carry roll, and Ziggs for the mid lane for Peke. So not quite the hyper carry that I was anticipating in the vein, but pulling the Jinx that will fulfill the role that we were talking about. A lot of damage. You are also adding to the zone control once more. The Flame Chomp is going down. Combine that with the poke that you're going to get from the Zap, as well as the bombs from Ziggs. Fnatic can do a whole lot of things at different stages of the game. If they chain their CC together, there should be no way that uh, Shook on Riven can hop, skip and jump through everything that Fnatic can throw down and put in the field. So for Alliance, they are going to be very, very reliant on avoiding all of that CC and ideally having superior vision to come from the side lanes because Fnatic can crowd control, they can pick, they can uh, zone very effectively. So final pick here then for Alliance is one which Wicked is definitely very familiar with. Irelia locked in for that top lane. And we'll see how Wicked does against Soaz on Gragas. So this is going to be an interesting matchup because Gragas is trending in the popularity because of his ability to deal with bruises in the top lane. I like the Irelia pick because it can deal with a lot of the CC Fnatic are putting down, 
based on her passive alone. That built-in, uh, basically, tenacity based on champions around you. What it also means is that if Fnatic ever group up and Riven or Aurelia gets stuck into them, the Orianna ball is just going to melt everybody. We've seen how strong Orianas have been in recent weeks, and I do feel the average Orianna level is higher than it was in the previous split. Yeah. But it's all about dealing with that crowd control. If Fnatic can use it effectively, there should, in theory, be no way for Alliance to get on them. But it's all about Fnatic landing and playing properly. Well, now that those champions have been locked in, which jungler do you guys think will make the biggest impact? Tweet at LOL Esports with hashtag FNC Cyanide or hashtag All Shook and let us know who you think will carry harder. Hard one to call for me. We've seen Cyanide that Jarvan seems to be a perfect fit to his style. If you remember back to his old Jarvan, the amount of dragons and barons that he was used to stealing there. We can also say the same for Shock. Aggressive, early game, invasive, heavy jungler. Riven fits him brilliantly. I completely agree with you. And we need to see how impactful he can be on that back line. Jinx as a champion is fairly immobile. She has some uh, escapes with the slow and the chompers, but if she gets caught by Aurelia or Riven in the early to mid game, it could be tickets for Reckless. Well, let's find out. We're going to get into game. It's Alliance versus Fnatic here. A top of the table clash. We've told you many times already. It's 2 1 in the head to head in favor of Alliance. Fnatic not only can join Alliance tied at the top of the table, but put that head to head record at 2 2, meaning that if their level come the end of the season, which is definitely not far away at this stage, then we could see a tight breaker game to decide the position in between the two. And that would be the first time that Fnatic are in first place all split long. So it's definitely bragging rights here for Fnatic if they can pull it off. Just before we start, there are boots on Yellow Star, and it looks like Soas has come around. Shook, he might get Shook oh, up. Oh, the body slam coming in. Can Shook get away from this one? Still has his oh. flash, but he does flash. The hook came out from Yellow Star. Last second flash from Shook gets him away to safety. That was real close, though. Yeah, but very important to note that the flash is down. So if Fnatic can actually play aggressive and uh, try to punish Shook in the jungle, they can catch him out and make his life difficult. I want to see how confident Shook plays for the next few minutes. Not having the safety of Flash may deter him from counter-jungling in Fnatic's side of the map. But of course, if he's got the support of his teammates, you never know, he may still go for it. I think one thing that's going for Alliance here, that they have a couple of wards down. So, well, I mean, they've not seen anyone leave that jungle area. We can see Wicked up there, but they also don't know that they've recalled away. So that might just put a couple of question marks in Shuk's mind. Does he go for the enemy red? Can he trust himself on that front? We can see that Fnatic have anticipated that Shuk's thinking, okay, they're up there to steal my red. I need to go get theirs. They're waiting with three men and we'll actually start that red off now. It may end up just being an even start with both teams in their own jungles because nobody has made a move to actually pick a fight. So Fnatic have done what they usually do with Vayne. Whenever they run a Vayne in their games, they tend to go for the lane swap to get Reckless a safer laning phase and try to get him to farm up and get to a powerful point quickly. Something that Jinx can do more effectively than Vayne is in the siege situation, Jinx with the minigun and the attack speed bonus that you get from that will be able to obliterate towers. So if Ziggs and Gragas are zoning and putting poke down, Fnatic may be able to play a very quick tower push comp if they get themselves into that position. With the lane swap, you have to think it's a possibility. Oh, Nif getting hooked in the stream and there, that's a good flash over the wall from Nif and I think that's enough to keep him safe, but the same might not be able to be said here for the red buff. So whilst it looked like Fnatic were backing away and we're going to go for a standard start, it actually seems that they're going to try and steal both reds right at the very get-go, but they need to be careful. Blue buff on Riven, Gragas is actually going to come up here, so Soaz, give them that extra power and presence that they need and cyanide will smite it away yeah so red buff stolen advantage fanatic they forced two flashes from alliance and they've got uh, control of the jungle yellow star playing very aggressive he's got the support of both cyanide and so as but they're a little while away. that's the third flash of the game Fnatic need to punish this. Fnatic have done a phenomenal job in the opening three minutes of applying pressure in every portion of the top half of the map here for Alliance. But it hasn't resulted in anything other than a red buff and some additional CS for Reckless. But it is at the cost of CS for Soaz. So we need to see if they can punish those flashes being down by getting more objectives or by picking up kills. But a very strong strategic start here from Fnatic. See Shuk coming in there to give them some backup as well. 
Need to be very careful, and Yellowstar showing once again. And I'm still not sure why teams aren't at least taking Thresh away from Yellowstar, if not banning it out. We've seen a lot of teams trending to banning Morgana against him, for example, in the past couple of weeks. Whereas his Thresh performances, every single time we've seen it, have been absolutely incredible. Continuing that trend here today, already forcing flashes left and right with his hooks. So if memory serves, this should be Yellowstar's 11th game on Thresh, and he has eight victories under his belt already. I still feel that he is the strongest Thresh player in the last four to six weeks. He is just phenomenal on the champion. On the same token though, Nif is undefeated on Morgana. Four games played, four victories under his belt. And if he can use his Black Shield effectively on Shook or Wicked, that could be the way in for Alliance to get some control in those team fights. Oh. Look how cheeky Yellowstar is, even interrupting the back from Shook. Just presence of mind and control. And uh, again, just a strong start from Fnatic. They've read Alliance well, and they've got themselves a uh, uh, summoner spell lead, but not a gold lead, as you can see Alliance are farming slightly more effectively. Yeah, and let's have a look at that farm somewhat. Mainly, it's coming from the top laners here. Soas against Wiki, 3 to 20. We see that Soas did use his teleport to go into that bottom lane to try and claw some of that disadvantage back. The mid lane is pretty much even. AD carries Reckless, has a slight lead. Shook also getting off to a bit of a slower start in the jungle. And to be honest, Cyanide has just got rid of a lot of his camps here. We saw him take away that big wolf and will be walking out there with us and with an XP advantage as well, of course, as the buffs. I love the fact that we highlighted Cyanide and Shook in our featured matchup of the day. And traditionally in this matchup, the split, Shook has been the one that has been controlling Cyanide's jungle. Shook has been stealing buffs and Shook has been making Cyanide's life hell. Cyanide this time around has already stolen a buff from Alliance. He's got a CS lead and it's thanks to having the support of the rest of his team. Every time they moved into Alliance's jungle. There were multiple members of Fnatic around, and they want to catch Frog. Oh, Yellowstar gonna move in. Actually, will Flash play there? No real follow-up to that one. The Satchel Charge will be down, but I don't think Frogan's in any real trouble there. Did have Riven coming across to give him a helping hand as well, but Yellowstar showing once again that he's not afraid to use those summoner spells to get involved and start things. Well, we'll see if it, if it can work out. Uh, Minion Wave, unfortunately, wasn't timed correctly. So the death sentence couldn't follow up. And something that I know the North American uh, casters love to point out, if you just look at the minimap and you look at your own minion wave on the minimap, it is mirrored by your opponents. So you can always uh, determine if you actually want to flash in there and go for that flay death sentence. But unfortunately, uh, it didn't work out for Yellow Star. So we need to see when this next red buff spawns in a couple of minutes time, if Fnatic are on point to invade. Remember 4.12 uh, buff timers were actually included in the patch, so they have vision of it. And the way Fnatic have played thus far, roaming Yellowstar, and a lot of pressure on Shook, I wouldn't be surprised to see them try again. Oh, landing the Hawks left and right. The Black Shield came in fairly quickly there, though, to stop the Chompers actually doing uh, yeah, maybe damage that we could say there. Obviously, not do much damage themselves, but give Reckless a few free auto attacks. And Wicked actually will use his recall here. I'm assuming going to heal up, buy up, and use his teleport to get straight back on into that lane. And we can see that he's picked up a Phage here as his first item. And we'll see if he does TP in or whether he opts to actually just walk it straight over. And that might be an anticipation here of a dragon here soon with Shook on the bottom side of the map. Potentially, it could also be in the fact that there was no more tower pressure from Reckless and Yellow Star because they weren't really trying to focus the tower down. Uh, Wicked was not under pressure to use his teleport. But notice how Nif has been babysitting Wicked in the top lane. Because of the power of that uh, Jinx Thresh combo and the fact that they can push the wave quickly and get on the tower very rapidly, I feel that Alliance are trying to defend their towers and extend this laning phase. Shook is still playing catch up to Cyanide. And in terms of CS, all of the play from Fnatic has cost Soaz almost uh, a 30 CS difference from Wicked. So while they got a lot of summoner spells, those flashes are almost all available with Wicked's coming off cooldown in a moment or two. And Fnatic have not been able to punish the summoner spells being blown. And they've actually come out 400 gold down. So while it was a positive play, net control, it hasn't really garnered Fnatic a lot more than the psychologic da psychological damage on Shook. just want to point out the item difference there between these supports as well. We've already seen Yellow Star very willing to move around the map to 
get in towards that mid lane, try and set something up for Frog, and actually going to boot some mobility as his first item. Whereas on the other side, Nif actually picking up the side stone and a few more wards as well to be putting down. As it actually happens, it looks like we're going to be seeing the lanes normalize somewhat with Soaz and Wicked up on the top side. There's the ulti coming in. Wicked baited there underneath the tower. Don't know if there's enough damage to actually pick up a kill, but Soaz showing that he won't be bullied. Very well played, and he actually forced Wicked to blow his flash instantly. Peke. Needs to get away himself. Shockwave was available from Frog, and it's not over yet. It's not over, and so as once again, he's going to be bullied here. Ultimate used from Wicked. Oh, get him a bit more HP back, running his pots as well. And that should be enough for him to have some free time in his lane. So as though does have teleport back available. So he should be able to just TP as we see right now. Straight back into that top lane. And won't be missing out too much. However, he is still behind here. And it's it's a decent amount of farm. 30 CS. It's going to be up to Cyanide and Yellow Star to move around the map and try and help him out. Uh, there are very few players in the world that will know matchups of Irelia versus X better than Wicked. And he's going to take advantage of any time he can put damage or get control back. Uh, Joe, you talked about Dragon a moment or two ago, and once Alliance relocated their AD carry and support, it's now opened them up to a Dragon. Yellow Star's got finish, Vision, Mega Inferno Bomb is available, so barring a steal from Ziggs, this should be Alliance's. Yeah, I'm not sure that Peke is even going to be trying for this one. And again, great tactical decision out of Alliance. He saw Soaz, forced to recall, was straight back in lane, no TP available. Wicked had hits should they really need it, and that for me was a fantastic move from Alliance, and that gives them a solid gold lead 10 minutes in. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and, and you consider how the game started. Oh. Alliance are looking strong. We talked about how Cyanide and Yellowstar need to help Soaz out. Look at both of them. Yeah, they're going on Wicked. Yeah, they're going to dive onto this one. This could well be first blood. Cataclysm is going to come down. Damage is actually going to Soaz, but he will be able to walk on away from the tower damage. And first blood in the end goes over to Fnatic. And Yellowstar may even, with this next wave, be the turret as well. Yeah, truthfully, there was always going to be a gap oh. coming from Fnatic. Remember, oh, that was close. There was vision on uh, uh, the white camp. We did see the super mega death rocket flying past. Uh, just to go back to the tower dive, Fnatic have also done low level tower dives multiple games in a row. So when you see that Soez is struggling and is so far behind, as well as seeing Moby Boots on Yellow Star, I think Alliance dropped the ball a little bit. There was no wards in the river, no wards in the tribush there. So Fnatic could move through the jungle easily. And the trade for Dragon cost first blood and a tower. Fnatic came out of here. Out ahead. And we think back to the Copenhagen Wolves game, I think is a prime example of that, where they just dove time and time again to get people ahead from that top lane. This time, of course, that kill went over to the support, which has now given him a couple of different items to be working in there, as well as his mobility boots. As we see Yellowstar once again just switching, not just between middle and bottom lane here, but not being afraid at all to go towards that top side of the map and really help out where it's needed. So notice as well, because of all the pressure in Alliance's jungle, Shook has been a non-factor this game. He's been bullied, he's been picked on, he's had no ganks. He tried to defend the top lane tower and got caught by Yellowstar Death Sentence. And Shook is effectively not yet in the combat of this matchup. So smart play from Fnatic. The question is now, do they start rotating around the map? Soaz is still a good chunk of CS behind Wicked. Reckless is farming his way up towards an Infinity Edge. And I still feel that in Siege situations, if they can chunk Frog in away, the wave clear... Ooh, that's very good. The wave clear is in favor of Fnatic uh, in terms of sieging power. But I want to see how they want to play it, because there's been a lot of movement across the map, top to bottom, for the Fnatic squad. Yeah, let's start showing once again that these max range hooks are not a problem for him whatsoever. Well, now we're seeing that 2v2 getting back involved down on the bottom side. Meanwhile, Cyanide here doing the golems is actually in no man's land. We'll see if Wicked's got enough damage here to actually kill him off. There is a flash coming out and Wicked allows him to just walk away. Flash was used and there is the flag and drag over the top of the wall and we'll be all fine from that one. Close from Wicked. Couldn't quite finish off the kill, though. No, not this time around. The mobility on, on Jarvan is, is so incredibly powerful. And that was quite smart, actually, from Yellowstar. I think he was throwing at Nif. I don't actually think he was trying to catch Tabs in that scenario. But nonetheless, Tabs and Nif, uh, even on CS, six or seven difference between Reckless and Tabs, you've got two very good late-game scaling AD carries. And with the tanky Jarvan, eventually, after Elder Lizard, and a tanky Soaz, Tabs may be able to uh, deal with them if 
he can get protected from the Command Protect as well as Black Shield, etc. It's going to come down to positioning in these team fights. And the mobility on Alliance's squad needs to deal with the crowd control and zoning of Fnatic's squad in order to win. But it's been a great start to this matchup. Let's have a look at the overall picture. 14 minutes in and gold is bang even with the Dragon for Alliance. The turret, single turret of the game so far with Fnatic. Both sat on 19,000 gold here as Shuck. Going in for his red buff, wants to make sure that he keeps tabs on that one. If we look at the gold to be spent here across the map, it's the mid laners. Unsurprisingly, that have had, a, I think, the, the quieter of the three lanes, to be honest, and spent a lot of time farming up. That are sat on about 12 to 1300 gold each. So that's, there's two reasons to that. The lane swap immediately forces your mid lane into almost an island because your junglers tend to help out the disenfranchised lanes. In addition to that, you've got such good wave clear from both Ziggs and Orianna. They both win Athenes first. So it's very difficult to shove your opponent's lane in and then try to roam around the map. And we've seen how good Peke and Froggen are at farming. Uh, 180 in favor of Froggen. Orianna definitely seems to be the strongest farming machine in the European LCS, breaking so many records uh, in multiple weeks, actually, back to back. Yeah, and both of these mid laners doing that as well. So from the uh, those wonderful farmers graphics in the preview show, these two really been battling over those uh, CS at 20 minute records. As the turret does go down there in the bottom side, that's Alliance's first of the game. And that gives them that thousand gold lead. So there's 50 seconds before Dragon comes back up. Look at the numbers from Fnatic in the top lane. Because of the fact that Wicked has got himself that Trinity Force, he can't really defend this tower. And that's what we talked about with Jinx. If she gets to a tower with a minigun, she can melt it. The thing is, with Trinity Force on both Wicked and Tabs, if a team fight were to occur in the next few minutes, there should be an item advantage in favor of Alliance. So as yet to complete a big item, we're still waiting for Reckless to finish his Eye Edge. And uh, we did a lot of stats digging for this game. In the three previous games, both Fnatic and Alliance are tied in Dragon Control at seven Dragons apiece. Alliance took the first one this match, 10 seconds before the next one's up. Let's see if Fnatic are gonna challenge. It'll be risky because item strength is still with Alliance. Well, Fnatic are moving with four men towards this middle lane. So as it walks back to the top of the map, it does have his teleport available. Fnatic are going to have to start moving on this one. That Dragon's down to less than half HP already. There is the bomb coming around, only catching Nip. Shucky's on the Dragon himself. He, he, he manages to steal once again. May well be going down here, putting the Cataclysm before he did go down. But Fnatic get the Dragon and back away, losing the one man. So that's a very good... Oh, there's over. no frog in here. Box goes down as well. He will flash away, but can he get out? There's the Shockwave, Super Mega Death Rocket from Reckless will actually get it. And it Again, Yellow Star coming up with the guns. So they trade one for one. Soaz doesn't have teleport. He's moving into the mid lane. Here comes Soaz from behind. Soaz is going to throw the barrel. He's knocked them away though. We'll see if he can lock anyone down. He is on towards Wicked Tabs as well. We'll be flying off towards his turret. And I think that's all she wrote. There's another hook. This one though doesn't land. Does not connect. So, uh, Fnatic with a 500 gold lead. Dragons completely even. One to one in this game. Eight to eight overall. Fnatic with the numbers advantage and health advantage in the mid lane are going get some towers down, uh, tower damage onto this mid turret, but the wave clear is pretty good. Wicked's gone in. Oh, Wicked's caught out, I think. I think he's going down here. It's so as it will get that one. There's Reckless, and we forget even the flag from Jarman giving him even more attack speed when he's hammering away on those turrets. It leaves Fnatic 3-1 up in kills, almost a 2,000 gold lead, and 3-1 up in turrets as well. And I said it at the start of the game, Jarvan is Cyanide's signature stealing champion, and he's done it again. Manages to grab the dragon from under Alliance's nose, and even though Alliance had the item advantage in that fight, they weren't grouped up. They were split across the river, and they chased Fnatic into the jungle. So Cyanide did go down in the pit, of course, but with Froggen being overextended by the Wraith camp, it allowed him to get hocked by Yellow Star. And Fnatic were tight in net, and they were able to get their damage focused much more accurately. So Fnatic come away with the tower, two kills, losing one and the dragon, and they've regained control of the gold. It is a small lead, but it is a lead nonetheless. Now Yellow start waiting once again in that tri bush. Seeing if they can lure anyone in using Reckless as the bait on that top side of the map. But it doesn't look like Alliance are going to be going for this one. I guess they figure Inner Turret's already down in the top lane. Chances of Fnatic pushing that far up the map here without the turrets in the middle and top lane still available. He's 
probably not going to happen, but Reckless continues to push it out. Alliance now starting to move themselves somewhat around, but Yellow Star and Cyanide are lying in wait should anyone go there. Yeah, no, just the way Nif actually moved. He was going to go left into the top lane through that bush by the double golems and decided against it, realizing something was fishy. A lot of members of Fnatic had been off the map for a while, and he plays it safe. If you look at the, the river and the top half of the map, Fnatic have got four pink wards down in conjunction to a couple of green wards. So Vision, definitely in favor of Fnatic. And we need to see if they can keep playing those games. They pulled the Lions away from the mid lane, and uh, we did see Wicked going to defend bottom as Soez was shoving that one up. But so far, Fnatic have been the, the team making the moves, and it is still, I'm still waiting to see how Shook's gonna get involved. He's, he's had some dragon calls, but we haven't seen him in team fights. We haven't seen him ganking because of how mobile and how proactive Fnatic have been playing. Come big for them. I mean, he's not had much presence whatsoever. So as here, will be oh, waiting. So trouble, ah, three men coming around. Spotted that one, I think, early enough here. However, we'll see if he can actually hold on to the turret. His barrels, of course, can clear out those waves quickly. And Peke also coming up there is the Mega Inferno Bomb to get rid of that wave completely and Alliance will be forced to either wait for that next wave or as seems to be the case just back away but Reckless is already pressuring the bottom lane. And look how smart Reckless is. He's actually not going into, into range with his minigun where Wicked could jump on him. He's just using fish bones, the rocket launcher, to poke from range. And if Yellowstone Reckless do not get challenged, I do not think that Wicked can deal with that tower. So it looks like it's going to be a tower trade. Three members of Alliance in the top lane. Reckless and Yellowstar have already got the bottom outer turret. Fnatic continue the push. Alliance need to back away because Reckless and Yellowstar are just going to keep pushing that inner turret. I mean, Reckless is melting this. And why not? I mean, they've finally got Oriana coming over to try and stop that one from happening. And that will be enough. We see the missing ping in the mid lane. And that was enough to force Reckless and Yellowstar away from things. Shot once again is going to head towards his top lane, trying to get himself farmed up. Only four CS behind that of Cyanide right now. But Cyanide, you have to say, has done more for Fnatic across the map, including that great Dragon Steel early on. And Fnatic still sit about 2,000 gold in the lead in this matchup. Other farm, if you look, 259 for uh, Froggen in the mid lane to the 262 of Peke. However, with the global gold, Peke still having a lead on that front. Yeah, just, just minor leads uh, for each of Fnatic's members at this stage. And Soez is still playing catcher. He is still a very large chunk of gold behind Wicked. And Wicked is one of the, the people that really goes out of his way to talk about how he feels Irelia in the mid to late game is actually better at team fights than many top laners, but they're going to be fulfilling very different roles. Soez is building tank, and he's going to be looking to disrupt the lines. He needs to split them up so that Fnatic can focus down single targets and allow Reckless to pick up a kill and then get excited for the resets. Wicked, on the other hand, will be looking to combo with Shook to get to the back line and either pick off Peke or Reckless as quickly as possible. A little spell shield, uh, black shield rather, blocking the hook. So Dragon's respawning. Now we have both teams actually poised for a, uh, maybe a legit team fight, you know, head to head. But Fnatic are the ones splits up this time around. So has his teleport and he's dealing with the top lane. Yeah, Wicked already in position for this one. Cyanide just hanging around the wards, coming in from the backside of the pit as well. So we'll see if Peke can actually get around. For now, he's just going to spam over the top of the wall. Try and keep Alliance zoned away from him whilst dealing a bit of damage as he goes through as well. So as in the meantime, still pushing out this top lane. Alliance have flanked around somewhat towards mid. Not going to push it any further than the minions. And look at this, Fnatic have gone all the way into that bottom lane. So some positional trade-offs here coming out. Very strategic game. Neither team wants to commit to Dragon and then force themselves into the potential of an AoE uh, burst damage. Orion at Rivet can do a lot of damage in a small space. And you can see that uh, Alliance try push mid, Fnatic try push bottom. Soez is now the man that's in lane and he may have put Alliance out. Oh, coming from the back, he's actually all alone here though, which could be a problem for him going forward. We'll try and move away on the top side. Meanwhile, Wicked has TP'd in, but he's all alone there. Almost taken down as soon as he drops in from the teleport. An Alliance have been forced to back away from this one completely. Not good news. Fnatic turn back around for Dragon. Super Mega Death Rocket is still available. If anyone from Alliance takes more damage, Reckless will look to assassin. They caught Becker! Oh, they caught Becker with a bandit. He's dead. Chuck will actually get that kill. 
and now they turn towards Yellow Star and will fall as well. Wicked gets that kill, and they can go straight to Dragon. So as or Cyanide will have to steal this one. Alliance, are they going to keep up with it? It does look like they will. Barrels will be rolling in. Surely Shook can hold on to this one. He lost the last one. There goes Cyanide once again. This time, though, it's taken by Alliance, and Fnatic have to flash out. Just like that, Alliance bring themselves back into their game. So as initiated the fight too quickly. No one else from Fnatic was close enough to get to that mid lane. So when Soez threw out the explosive cask, Fnatic was still playing catch up, had to dodge the dark binding, and of course, Wicked teleporting into the middle of the team. That forces Fnatic to not work on 100% the same page. So this time around, Alliance are the ones that are clumped up tighter together, Fnatic are the ones that are split up and engage uh, different targets at different times. So they end up losing the dragon, and all of a sudden, Fnatic regain the 1,000 gold lead. This is exactly the game I was hoping to see when we seen this on the schedule. It's fantastic so far. If only it ends in a base race, I think all of our wishes, at least for one of these teams, <laughs> will be complete. Yes, We've seen it before from them in week four, and I think the outcome, especially on Fnatic's side, may just hinder any decision to go for anything like that again. Of course, that's all ifs and buts, and probably not that likely either way. We're 25 minutes in, we're tied on kills. It's 4-2 in turrets for Fnatic, but Alliance hold the gold lead. Although, to be fair, for a 25-minute game, it's not a massive goal. So one of the things I want to highlight about that previous fight, Nif lands a great dark binding onto Peke. Peke actually may have been able to flash it if he wanted to, regardless. And because of the mobility of Riven, with her Valor the E, as well as the Broken Wings the Q, uh, Shook was able to get on top of Peke and stun him up very, very quickly, which allowed Alliance to get all of the damage down and uh, sort of gain control of that area of the map. So this, the, the key is still for Alliance, just how quickly they can collapse on a target. And when they land that CC, it is very, very punishing. So Alliance will once again be looking to try to create those opportunities. They've got more wards in the river, but still not deep vision, still not deep wards, and they've not been in Fnatic's jungle really at all this game. Fnatic have been the ones that have been invading Alliance and playing, uh, I would dare say, much more aggressive. And I think that last fight there, giving that Brutalizer and Hex Drinker over to Shook is a much needed boost for him. We saw before that not particularly high amounts of damage is now a little bit tankier as well. So we'll see how he goes forward in that. We have now hit the 300 CS mark with the mid laners. 324 for Peke, 320 for Frog. And just showing you these guys, 26 minutes in, absolute farming machines. For the AD carries, a couple more items coming out there as well. It was an Infinity Edge start for Reckless. That's now been a static shift added in along with a Vamp Scepter. On the other side, Trinity Force start for Tabs. Now has a Blade of the Ruin King as well. So as we're getting to the later stages of the game, I think it's fair to point out Baron control in, once again, history. Four Barons in three games, three of them have gone to Alliance. So Alliance make better Baron calls against Fnatic than Fnatic do. Highlight that fact because if Alliance can force Fnatic to come to them, and if Alliance can turn and peel from the Baron to engage Fnatic quickly, that could be a way for them to uh, force Fnatic's hand. The fear of a Gragas barrel into Cataclysm while sieging has to be prevalent for Alliance's mind. So if they are going to group up uh, near a tower, they really have to have good jungle vision to avoid and prevent Cyanide or Soaz catching them off guard from a flank. Like now, you mean possibly here as the wards go down and Alliance move over towards that inner turret in the bottom lane. They're just waiting for another minion wave to come in, but there are five men there from Fnatic. Uh, sorry, from Alliance. Fnatic don't have all five with them. There is a hook. He's landed onto Tabs. Will there be a follow through? The bomb comes out. The barrel will knock them away. Yeah, not a great barrel there from Soaz. Came a second or two late. Uh, had that knocked somebody backwards, yes, they could have worked. Well, that does mean Alliance has a window of opportunity. There's no Mega Inferno Bomb, there's no explosive cast. So now they can siege with relative safety, knowing that those very big AoE spells uh, are at least not available, and it looks to be the case. Going to be using Hogwarts Bioarcane Barrage to poke on the tower. As Deficio pointed out earlier today, if you get that Trinity Force proc damage, it works in your favor. But look at the movement from Alliance. Confident control, thanks to the vision they've afforded themselves. They're landing the binding now oh, to Soaz as well. Get off to the side. Yeah, Fnatic looking to defend this outer turret in the middle lane. And rightly so, Alliance had started to push there. Wicked will actually keep this 
split push effort going on, but Alliance seem to be recalling with a couple of men, so this for now will be a more of a diversionary tactic, although they've cancelled that. Wicked actually is going to be chased down. He does have a Banshee's Veil, though, so Yellow Star knowing the hook's not even worth throwing his way. Now they start to push towards the turret, and an instant ultimate comes out from Peke. Okay, so two things. Yellow Star had flashed for Wicked. I believe the Flay was going to connect, and Wicked has burned his flash himself. So, uh, support flash for top lane flash, I think that's a fair trade. The other thing to note is with the cooldown reduction that Peke has, that's actually two Mega Inferno Bombs used defensively to prevent the Siege and prevent the uh, tower damage that Alliance have been trying to put down. But all of a sudden, Alliance are playing with much more confidence. They are the ones dictating the tempo, they are the ones moving around the map. And Wicked, I think, is going to try and play the split push game as long as he can. Because if he continues to get more items, it's going to be very, very difficult to deal with him in this mid to late game. So, blue buff coming in once again for Frogan. He's now got the workings of that Zonya's Hourglass on top of his Rabadons and the Athenes. We've also got just over 10 seconds until the next dragon of the game comes down. Let's not forget that Alliance have had all of them except the one which Fnatic stole away earlier. So Fnatic are losing control of their jungle. Alliance have once again invaded. They put some more vision down to ensure uh, smarter dives if they want to chase past the dragon. But look at the play. Fnatic have grouped in the mid lane. Alliance are still on the dragon, so they've split themselves up. Soaz is coming into that mid lane as well. This is going to be a dragon for an inner turret trade. We do see Reckless should take this out with a couple more autos. Yeah, easy take down there. And that will be the trade up that Fnatic were looking for. They did use the teleport from Soaz to get in there. And look at this. Alliance are trying to flank around the side. It looks like they want the fight. It, it's going to come down to whoever gets caught out. A good Dark Binding or Death Sentence might be the death of one of these teams. Soaz does have Explosive Cask available, but he's split off from the rest of the team. Needs to be very, very careful. If uh, Alliance decides to use that uh, Dissonance and, and use the move speed Aura, they could jump onto Alliance, uh, onto Fnatic very, very quickly. Where are you going to go here? Alliance have actually said, we're going straight down middle. Look at Fnatic here. Reckless has walked towards the top lane. Peke is recalling. This should be the inner turret in that mid lane, which means that the turret advantage, if you want to call it that, the Fnatic got whilst Alliance are doing Dragon has been completely knocked out of it. Alliance got the Dragon and now get that inner turret as well. Monumental errors from Fnatic. The way they had set themselves up, they needed to team fight to get presence or to pull Alliance towards them. Alliance, however, with very, very smart play. Understanding the position that Fnatic was in and realizing if they stayed grouped up, Baron. they could potentially go for, you know, those towers or team fight. Now, remember, Barons have been in favor of Alliance in previous weeks. They've started the focus going down relatively quickly, but all of Alliance are here, most of Alliance rather. This could be a steel potential. There's no Shook. There's no Shook. There's no Smite. No I think shook. Fnatic has got it. Oriana's not there either. The Baron is going low, and there it is going over to Fnatic. We saw Reckless getting low from it from the start, but they did it quick enough. Look at Alliance. They're actually moving down towards this mid lane, but I think Fnatic can swoop around and get towards that inhibitor turret fast enough. You can debate for days whether or not that is a mistake from Alliance backing away, or whether that is a great play from Fnatic punishing Baron. And moments ago, you can also debate mistake from Fnatic or great play from Alliance. Maybe it's a combo of both. But Fnatic then reading the situation, understanding Alliance were going to back away, they did, and they steal Baron. That's pretty good damage on Soas. That's very good. It should guarantee the tower. Yeah, there is a Mega Inferno bomb to use, but I think they're just going to tank this one on Wicked. We'll take the hits of that one with his Banshee's Veil in there as well now. It's no real problem for them. Alliance get their fifth turret of the game. We're tied on that front, and there's only a thousand gold that separates these two teams. I'm interested now what Fnatic do, whether they try to push an advantage with that Baron buff on. I think they should. They've got such great Siege, and they've got such great poke. With both Zix and Gragas, even though Gragas doesn't have the highest amount of ability power, the barrels just laying in the lane give you pressure, give you presence, and people have to dodge it. Fnatic have been trying to push the lanes out. Uh, every chance we've seen, Soaz has been the one that's really trying to shove those side lanes, and now you can see it's actually Peke and bottom, Reckless was top. So for Fnatic, they've got the statistical bonus thanks to Baron, but they need to be very, very careful, because if they engage in an area that Alliance can collapse on them quickly, it can turn sour uh, very quick, because both Aurelia and Riven can get out of Cataclysm. And if they do get knocked away, they're super quick. So the, the, the theory of all the, the threat of closing that gap is still very high. There's a ping here 
towards the bottom lane. Fnatic have actually started to close on it, although their main turret killer, Reckless, is not actually there. He's just coming up through their bottom side of the jungle. Fnatic here can't afford to take Alliance on head-to-head. -head. They've seen that Wicked's up top. He's actually recalling now as well. And I think that Alliance may be forced to give this one up. Yeah, they are. Fnatic moving there. Alliance say, let it go. We'll defend from the base. Yeah, Alliance don't really want to fight a team with Baron, uh, especially in the lane. If you, if you have somebody either in the jungle or in that lane, you can use the box and you can use the Cataclysm super effectively. Look at that difference as well. Overtime with gold. Shows you that it's swung a couple of times here between the 16 and 24 minute mark. Fnatic been able to pull ahead there, but that has swung somewhat now and we see that the gold is bang level. Six towers to five, three kills to three, completely even gold and it it really shows you the strategic level of both Fnatic and Alliance. Um, especially the last five or six minutes when they traded Towers and Baron due to punishing your opponent's positional mistakes. You know, Alliance punished Fnatic, got Towers. Fnatic punished Alliance, got Baron. And Fnatic used Baron to get another Tower. They're running out of that Baron buff. It's about a minute left. And no we, haven't, that. <laughs> we haven't actually seen a big team fight from either of these teams. Um, whether or not that's due to uh, nervousness, nervousness or playing tentatively because of, of, of the importance of this game, or whether it just hasn't, the opportunity hasn't presented itself, this game could be over with one convincing team fight. Yeah, and I, I think more of a, this is a big game, guys. If you have to use a flash, you better damn well use it. You don't want to die. We saw in the early stages, the first 10 minutes, flashes were going off left, right, and center as players were avoiding basically yellow star for a lot of that one. We also saw Peke not hesitating to just flash straight away in the mid lane when he was Sign a little bit caught out. Now. Let's see if he can actually get in. They've moved past that halfway point. There's a ward there in the lane as There's well. No he can come straight in from this one. Tabs now is going to be joining in, so they'll see that oh, Tabs is there with him. I think that's the time gone for them, though. They missed their opportunity entirely. Tabs was not there and Fnatic hesitated. Now it's Fnatic that are split up. Look at Reckless, he's way down the lane. And Fnatic are trying to play uh, catch up. They need to reposition. Alliance are the ones that were tight in it. Cyanide needed to have gone. He needed to have jumped earlier to uh, take advantage of Tabs not being there. But it doesn't happen. And we continue to reset. Dragon up in 10 seconds. Fnatic got the previous, Alliance got the previous one. So we'll see who's gonna get their hands. It's now Alliance. Looking to do the same to pray. Here they come! Coming around the back of this one, binding, not connecting. That may mean that they get away. Is the other side going to stop forward? He actually misses the hook there. Soas is off on his own on this left-hand side. Needs to be careful. We can see how tense this battle is. Both teams just set up five versus five across that middle lane. It looks like Alliance have done enough to get themselves a dragon, but they may end up losing some of their base here if they're not careful. Fnatic actually have stepped back, and it looks like Fnatic is going to not get anything from the base and lose out on dragon. As well. So the threat of going for the inhibitor turret for Fnatic was a guaranteed team fight from behind. If Fnatic were the ones to push up that middle lane, it would have allowed Alliance to come in from behind, chase them to the top lane potentially. I can only think that Fnatic were hesitant out of fear of the impending team fight. So regardless, it was Alliance to pick up their fourth dragon of the game. Um, just before that started, we've been keeping tabs on, on buff control and barring the strong start from Fnatic earlier, they've secured 14 red or blue buffs this game to Alliance's 11. So it is an advantage to Fnatic, but it's far and away not as uh, impressive as the, it was going to imply at the beginning of the match. Let's have a look down items with that as well. After that last dragon, we've got one minute, 20 seconds for the next Baron to come up there. Both mid laners have now added in those Void Staffers. Also, the workings of the Zonyas coming up there for Peke as well. So, pretty much identical when it comes to builds on that front. If you look at the AD carry, slight difference as, Pe as Peckless. Reckless has <laughs> gone in and picked up himself the Blade of the Ruin King now and another BF Sword. Tab's feeling like he needed a bit more safety and picked up a Banshee's Veil. So, it's a different style once again. If Reckless is permitted time to auto attack, he should, in theory, do more work than Tab's thanks to having a, a few extra items, a few more damage. But on the same token, if Reckless is out of position at all, he should also get blown up. Having no defensive items at the 40 minute mark is a greedy and dare I say reckless style of playing. Wow. But again, he's banking on the fact that the rest of his team will protect him. Assuming the rest of the team does their job, he should have the protection he needs. Whereas for Tabs, it's all about dodging a hook or an explosive cast. 
So Fnatic have to do extra work now. Pop those uh, Banshee's Veils like they've just done, and now there's the opportunity to engage. And it looks like Alliance thinking about it. Oh, Cyanide was trying to catch out Shook. Oh, there's the rocket does manage to land. Are they going to go on this one? Ulti comes through and Shook is down to less than half HP, but Alliance will walk away. Wicked actually over on the side. The barrel will roll in. Where's the ulti out of so as It will knock Wicked into the rest of the team. He flashes straight out of there. And while the Zap lands, they've actually pushed away from it. Tab's going aggressive there as well. Got Cyanide down to half. And again, we see a half trade from both of these teams. Nobody has been caught severely enough to get killed. And because of the fact that both teams have been playing very, very defensively, we have still yet to see an extensive team fight. Fnatic, now we're the ones starting. Cyanide played super aggressively, held onto his Cataclysm for the longest of times. But they did get the flash out of Wicked. So once again, small summoner spell advantage to Fnatic. Baron is a threat, it has respawned. But Fnatic are backing away and this is gonna come down to one strong team fight, Joe, and I feel one mistake from a player could cost their team the game. Because of how powerful both of these squads are at taking towers, Orianna, Cogsmore, Riven, Arena, they'll melt through towers. And fairly similarly, you know, Ziggs, Jinx, Jarvan, Gragas, if they get up to towers, they can get through them very quickly. And neither team's looking like looking for a team fight. And so it's all safety. Yeah, I mean, the way that this game has gone, because they've been so pensive and careful about how they're playing, you think that if they do get a good team fight off, that's when they're going to try and seize the little advantage of that, or big advantage of that, depending on how it really goes, and try and win the game. We see here, Wicked's going to try and flank around the back of XPK. They know that Soaz isn't there. Wicked actually getting turned back around on. He may have done enough damage to Peke here. He forced the flash. Will Alliance think about going Baron? There's no teleport from Soez yet, and Mega Inferno Bomb is still a threat. So even if Alliance go, oh, they call Wicked. Call Wicked. Not they won't follow to go through. In. If Alliance go for Baron, there's going to be the threat of the Mega Inferno Bomb. Wicked, uh, Peke rather, has not recalled. He has still not backed away from the mid lane. Soez has moved his way up. So the AOE threat is still there. And this should be Cyanide's time to shine. If he can get multiple members in the, the Baron pit with Cataclysm, that could be the way for Fnatic to get a lot of damage, but look, Alliance still safe. Pensum, Peke on a third HP, and Soez is the one that split up on the team. Pensum move from Fnatic. I feel that would be a, a risky one considering how this game has gone so far. We see them just pulling up that mid lane a little, try and maybe force Alliance to come back and show themselves as Wicked. Actually going to dive in, but he's onto Cyanide. Not really the target that they'll be able to blow up as a hook comes out from Yellow Star as well. Peke knows here that he's dangerously low, but if he goes back, it means a rush Baron for Alliance. Yeah, it really does. The moment his presence is missed, you feel like Alliance are going to go for an objective. It looks like they've started going this in. one off. We do see Fnatic, they're still in the mid lane. They can respond fairly quickly, and if Cogsmore is given a little more time, this Baron's going to get taken. Fnatic have lost it. By the time they get there, it should be Alliance's. Got no vision, and there he goes, down to Alliance, and Fnatic come in and realize we've lost that Baron. Will that now give Alliance the confidence that they need to try and push more in this game. We see the bottom lane is actually pushing in Fnatic's favor all the way up to the steps of that inhibitor turret, which up until now not really having too much of a threat against it. Wicked has simply just walked up there and will be able to clear things out. So first Baron went to Fnatic, second one here to Alliance. They now hold a 2,000 gold lead, not much of a gold lead, 42 minutes into it. But does it give them the confidence, I think, is the real key part here in this matchup. A match which has been so... You see how both of these teams are scared, I think we can put it bluntly, to make plays and make bad plays more than anything else. I actually agree with you. And I think the indecisiveness in that mid lane with Peke being low, this is a teleport now from Wicked. He's coming all the way from base. Alliance are just straight up trying to siege. But they've got a lot of wave clear uh, to deal with. You know, Gragas and Ziggs are going to do a massive amount of work at defending this tower, and Reckless got himself a bla uh, Bloodthirster now. So, a lot of sustain with the Bloodthirster. It's now higher in 4.12 and the Blade of the Rune King. So, I really want to see how Alliance try to make this one work. A Dark Binding on a Squishy might mean a tower dive, but look at the range from Tabs. He's dropping a tower. Almost down to half HP. We see the wave clear of Fnatic not getting rid of that full wave there, and that's a Bit of a scary sign for them because if they're to hold on to these towers, they need to get those waves out of there straight away. Because I'm not sure how long Alliance are willing to be tanking up these turrets. And up until now, you have to say that it's a 
matter of time here before Alliance break through this one. We see those bindings coming out. Barrels need to be on the minion wave. The tab's actually going to get knocked around a little bit there. It allowed Reckless to get in, get a free auto attack off, and that gives Fnatic a brief respite until the next wave comes. And notice how defensive Alliance were. The moment that Banshee's Veil... Oh, they've got Nip. Oh. Star decides not to go in. But the moment that Banshee's Veil was popped, all of the lines backed away. They did not want either Cyanide or Soaz to get and engage on the Alliance squad. But they're chipping it away, down to, you know, less than uh, a third of hit points, basically. And Tabs is getting as many auto attacks as he can. That's going to be a tower down on this next wave, I feel. And that, it makes him so hard to lock up, even if you do throw everything out. And there's a hook onto Wicked, no follow through. I think the tower is going to go down with this wave. Cyanide tries to get in there. There's the Mega Inferno bombing. Only does a bit of damage to Tabs at the back. An alliance have managed to break through the defensive line and will take the first in him. Indecisiveness from Fnatic. It's Wicked that's looking to start the fight. Fnatic are too afraid to pick a fight with Alliance while Alliance have Baron buff. So Fnatic do not engage. They lose an inhibitor, and now they're going to lose a top inner turret as well. There are two siege minions here. If Alliance want to continue uh, sieging up Fnatic's base, they've got a massive amount of minions to work with. In onto this one. Can they hold it in? Tab's actually taking a lot of damage there. Got the instant shield out of Frogger. The minion waves cleared up quickly. That's a lot of damage towards Wicked. Once these Banshee's Veils go down, we see that Peke trying to really capitalize on that, spamming as much as he can in the direction of that person whose Banshee's was popped off. But a lot of protection as well with the Black Shield. We see Tab's already. Not too afraid to step forward and hit that turret because he knows with the Black Shield he's going to be saved and especially now that his Banshee's Veil comes up as well. Also, if you see Gragas, Jarvan and Thresh throwing themselves at uh, Tabs, it opens Fnatic up to get caught by Froggen, by Shook, by the AoE. So there's always that benefit, that safety net of if Fnatic clump up, you're going to be hit by the combo of Alliance. So Fnatic are now having to deal with super minions in this middle lane. Alliance are going to grab their fifth dragon of the game out of six, and they're in complete control of the map. With Super Minions in the middle, and with Baron just wearing off, it's now all up to Fnatic to find a pick and pull themselves back in the game. Baron buff gone though, I think that might be the key part in this one. I think that might allow Fnatic to start pushing a little bit further out of their base. However, now look at the items coming in. Froggen has got himself a Guardian Angel. There's one for Shook as well. And that will make Alliance a little more confident, I feel, with starting off these exchanges. Yeah, I completely agree. I actually feel like Fnatic have been a little hesitant uh, to look for engages because I do feel there is a lot of power in their comp with Jarvan, with Gragas, with uh, uh, Thresh. But the safe style of play means all of the work they did in the early game to keep Shook down and to make his life difficult has somewhat been counterbalanced. Shook is now even on CS with all the objectives and the items he's built up. He is very, very tanky. He will come back to life and, you know, ruin your day uh, with a lot of damage and a lot of mobility. So for Fnatic, it's going to need to be punishing Alliance's positional play. If Alliance are in a spot where Fnatic can jump on them, I feel like that's where Fnatic will uh, close the gap. But for the time being, Alliance have not made those mistakes. Not really. Once in a recall, and they lost a Baron. That's the, the biggest mistake I think they have made. It's not the kind of mistake that you tend to make twice in a row either. When that kind of thing happens, as a scan comes down. Fnatic set up as a five. Haven't currently been spotted. However, that will happen if they continue on that route. There was a war just a little further up. Alliance are actually pushing down this top lane once again. Fnatic setting up the trap here off to the side. They have been spotted now. Where's the damage going to come from? Who are they going to go for? In the end, they can't really connect onto anyone. Peke just trying to spam his way through there. The Guardian Angels successfully popped here. As Shuk does start to step forward. You see the ball on top of his head. And a good shot wave here from Frog. And it could really get things started. So there's two things to take note of. Nef has got those home guard boots, uh, sorry, captain boots built. So if he's behind the team, it allows the Lions to peel away and retreat quicker if he's running away with the uh, Moby boots. On the same token, if he's sitting in front trying to do a flash soul shackles engage, that will allow the rest of his team to collapse and close much quicker. We finally see Reckless picking up a defensive item. This is the second point. With some MR, he may not get instantly burst by Froggen and uh, uh, with the shockwave. But again, it's, he needs to be super, super careful of his positioning, and he can't afford to get caught by multiple uh, champions of Alliance. Super minions 
Fnatic streaming in there as well, and that's dangerous for Fnatic. Luckily for them, the inhibitor has respawned, so that pressure will slowly but surely start to dwindle away. However, it's going to be about Baron once again here, up in less than 10 seconds. Alliance have already moved back. Fnatic here have to decide, do they go for it? They've got a big minion wave pushing down the bottom. But I think they're going to try and challenge on Baron. Oh, this is so scary. Alliance are looking to find picks, and we'll see if they can catch Cyanide. Cyanide's in trouble. Cyanide does get locked up here. Dark finally comes down. There, he will take the Lantern away to safety. Well, can he actually finish through? Actually, with his Flag and Dragon, he's going to put Cataclysm down. That will actually get him away from this one. Fell super low, but ultimate down. Flash down. That takes a lot of his steel potential away as well. And Alliance now going to go in towards it. Oh, it does land from Yellow Star. Cyanide needs to heal, and he needs to come back as quickly as possible because the Lions have started the Baron. There's no explosive cask available from Soaz either. It's once again going to be all on Reckless to get the damage down. But if they get on him, he will die. Soaz, considering going for the steal, I don't think it's going to work with that barrel roll. And Alliance, they do grab the second Baron of the game. It actually wasn't even the smite from Shook. That was close. That though. took that one. That, could, that was really risky, actually. The barrel coming in. You can actually see here Fnatic pushing up the mid lane somewhat. The hook once again does come through, but Alliance with that Baron buff on the tower. How scary it was earlier on for Fnatic whilst Alliance were Baroned up. This time, however, they seem to be moving out somewhat. Gonna take away that blue buff. You pointed out rightly that the tower in that bottom lane did. Did it actually fall? It did go down. The minions it did go got down. it. Yeah. So the thing about this now is actually with minions taking the bottom tower, believe it or not, in map presence, Fnatic find themselves in a situation where. They're fairly even with Alliance. They've both got explosive inhibitors. The difference is, Fnatic have still continued to show they don't, uh, they're not comfortable team fights and they don't want to team fight. And Alliance have got their second Baron of the game. Alliance sieged up incredibly effectively when they had the previous Baron. And if you contrast that to the very first Baron that Fnatic secured, Fnatic got an inner tower which they snuck. Yep. They didn't siege, they didn't play aggressive enough at all. It feels like all of Fnatic's aggression was focused in the early stages of the game. And as we've progressed through the game and, and traded blow for blow, the safety and the, the, the uh, importance of the game really may be weighing down on some of their decisions. I just want to go back to week four and that ill-fated, at least on Fnatic side, base race. They were pushing the bottom lane out as Alliance went straight down the middle. There are the two lanes again this time around that have open inhibitors. However, it's Alliance with that Baron buff. With, you have to say, the confidence at this stage. You see them now just sauntering on in towards this mid lane. There's the hook. He goes on to a Banshee's Veil, though. And that means that Shuck won't be hooked in. And this uh, inhibitor can be focused down. That means Super Minion's coming in. There is the hook on to Shuck, but no follow through. He's got a GA as well. Don't With forget. The Black Shield as well as Command Protect. There's eight or 900 hit points worth of shield to burn through. You add the armor and ammo onto that shield, it's actually very difficult to burst single targets down. Fnatic need to get the right target focused. Super Minion's now gonna pour through the middle lane. Alliance continue to siege. They are definitely playing more effectively with the Baron buff than Fnatic did. And again, Fnatic need to find a way to engage. They need to get onto Alliance in order to defend the rest of their base, and we'll see how long they can hold off here. Not many waves, not lasting necessarily too long now. Soas does take a big hit, but we saw Tabs already stepping forward as he did before in that mid lane to get a good few auto attacks off onto the tree. There's oh. the hook, he actually misses. Cyanide going in, there's a cataclysm, they're looking for Tabs. He will flash away, and Cyanide is going to go down. Tabs picks up that kill. There's another hook, this time on towards Frogger. Have they got the damage? He's not got his GA pot. Summon a heal actually helping him out. He's tanking up the turret though here. Needs to get away or the turret goes down. That'll be even better for them. Two men down for Fnatic. This could be the game for Alliance. Alliance have got the numbers advantage. They've just got to deal with Pekka. He's still got a lot of wave clear, but there are super minions coming through the middle lane. They may have caught Pekka out. The rest of Alliance not going to jump on him just yet. Pekka and Reckless have to be men here. They have to uh, really go for this fight. Shook, you can see already shielded up. Yellow Star does get nip hooked into this one. Reckless staying away on the backside. Pekka is actually behind them and he's going to get the GA out of Froggen. He uses his Sonya's but going to go down straight away after it. Some good damage towards Chuck, but his Guardian Angel wasn't taken down. And now two men left to hold on to this one. Still 20 seconds until Cyanide comes in. Alliance are just going to steam through this one. Put plans on towards Chuck, but the next the Nexus turret's going down, the Nexus itself will fall, and Alliance win the game, stop Fnatic's win record, and secure that spot at the top of the league. 
undisputed first place in the European LCS. 3-1 over Fnatic. They extend the lead at the top of the table and really just demonstrate great control that game. Patient, coordinated, they didn't panic. And I actually think that was an exquisite match to watch. Really technical, tactical the whole way through. You know, 6-3 in kills really tells you a lot about that game, about how many times we saw both sides dancing around once another. And yes, we can say that some of those decisions may have cost objectives. We saw Alliance taking a Dragon, giving up an inner turret, but then we saw Fnatic backing away, losing an inner turret of their own in middle. Then we saw Alliance recalling from that and Fnatic rushing in for a Baron, but after that point, Alliance seemed to have nailed it down a little harder. Yeah, I completely agree. It's not often that you see games have half the amount of kills as towers secured. Fnatic took seven towers, Alliance took 10. It was really a very strategic game. And if, if you're a chess player, it's like an analogy where you lose a rook to take a bishop, trade a castle for a queen. It's those sorts of moves. In this match, it was inner turrets for dragon. Then it was baron, like you said. And I really have to wonder, if Fnatic had played more aggressively and looked for team fights earlier in the game when they were a little more in control, how would that have gone? Because you've seen how much damage they put down. Yeah. A lot of Alliance's members got very, very low in that final fight. If that fight had happened 15 or 20 minutes earlier. That one point in the mid lane where Cyanide was sat inside of the Wraith camp, where Tabs wasn't yep. there, that could have been the moment for you know, him to jump over the wall, start off a five versus four. They were going to get people low, if not take them down, I think, before Tabs could really get involved in that one. Either way, Kind of what we expected here yep. from the top of the table clash. What it means though is that Alliance carry that head to head, which means a lot possibly, especially here in Europe. We've seen season after season that tiebreakers have been a real thing. And it means that Alliance have that safety of even if they now draw with Fnatic yep. in terms of the lead itself, because of their head to head, they'll finish first no matter what. 17 wins, six losses for Alliance. On the other side of the coin, 15 wins, eight losses for Fnatic. So there's a small buffer as well. Yeah. So in order for Fnatic to catch and take that first place seed, Alliance have to lose a lot of games and actually end one game behind Fnatic. What I really, really like about this matchup is just how both teams demonstrated uh, a great understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of the respective comps. And that moment you were talking about, where Cyanide was looking to engage, we have to go back and look at the replay. Have to look, was Reckless close enough for a fight to bring, uh, uh, break out? Was there enough vision? Did Fnatic know Tabs wasn't there? Maybe if they didn't have vision elsewhere in the jungle, it was just erring on the side of caution. But I think it was, it was a phenomenal game and, and all credit to Alliance. They go now 3-0. Uh, yeah, because they won both the games last week. And they break Fnatic's winning record again. Breaking the records. It seems like not many teams can get past eight wins. Nope. Eight wins seems to be the magic number, at least this year. Uh, we've seen Fnatic already twice get up to that kind of level and then only to falter. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's not really the, the streaks that count. It's winning your majority of games. That's what's going to put you, to obviously, towards the top of the table. You win more than you lose. It makes common sense. But it's all about form now going towards playoffs. I'm so happy you said that because in the preview show today, I was talking about this matchup and I felt that the, these two teams are most likely going to be in the final at Gamescom. Mm. Um, it feels like they're just another level above everybody else. And Alliance have proven three out of four times to be stronger than Fnatic this split. Uh, instant decision making for the base race. Prolonged, that was a 50, 53 minute game yeah. that Alliance came out ahead. Fnatic need to change something up if they want to get their fourth LCS split title at Gamescom, well they have got to get their first of course. But uh, for the time being, Alliance have been a step ahead. I'll say one step ahead, not more than that. Yeah, because I mean, you look back to that game and it just shows how close these two teams are in terms of form right now. It, I, I have to say, though, I wonder where the, the, the teams are closest to them. I don't see really many teams being able to match a, a Fnatic or an Alliance that are on top of their game, which, of course, I agree. you would expect there will be come the playoffs times. But now, guys, it's time to go down to Shox, who's joined by both Froggen and Tabs. Thank you very much, Joe. Indeed, joined by Frog and Tabs. First off, congratulations, still in first place, and firmly so with the Alliance after beating Fnatic. Um, guys, what did you make of Pix and Vance coming in for you guys? Tabs, maybe shine a light on that. Uh, going into Pix and Vance, we had a pretty clear idea what we wanted to do, and I think we actually outpicked them in this game. 
Um, our comp was actually very good against there, so we ended up having a pretty good draft. Yeah, we predicted pretty much everything they were going to do, and they messed up in some of the picks and bans, which allowed us to have all the, all the things we wanted. You say you predicted everything they were going to do. Let's break down the game a little bit, because of course in the early game they had pretty good buff control of your buffs as well, which kind of messed a couple of things up. So how did you guys react to that? Um, with the way the game was played, it was pretty obvious to what was happening, and I think the only bad thing in our early game was Wicked dying to first blood top because we got the dragon, and we should have gotten really far ahead of that. But they responded uh, pretty good, and they had six to hold the waves whenever we wanted to rotate and push down towers for towers. They always had six to hold it, which was really annoying, but I think we managed to get around it pretty well, and I think we managed to outplay them in team fights too. Well, yeah, as you mentioned, in team fights, there were only six kills in the entire game, yet it was one of the most intense games I think I ever watched. Tabs, did you guys feel that as well, that it was so tight and that you had to play those map movements exact? Yeah, every time we went for an objective, they would just push down mid and they would avoid, uh, avoid us the whole time. And this ended up just being objective trading and trying to not get a really bad trade, like them, giving them an imit or inhib for a dragon or something. So we need to be really careful about our positioning. So, Froggen, what was the turning point then? Where did they make the tactical error and you guys succeeded? They made the tactical error to never fight us. Like, in a, at every single objective, we were there and we managed to get every track. Actually, we, we messed up once with uh, letting them having a Baron for free, but except for that, they only smite store one and they never fight, fought us for dragons. They only tried to trade objectives. And if you never try to fight and only try to trade objectives, you are eventually going to lose. Yeah, exactly. Because even with the Baron, they didn't want to team fight you guys. Yet it was pretty hard for you guys to get into that base, obviously, with the Zig. So what was the final push? You, of course, getting that final Baron. What was it that cut you over the edge? Mm, I think basically at the end, we uh, a few items up on them. And Gragas is incredibly useless with that item build he went. And Avilia can always stun people, even if they build Banshee's Veil or uh, any other defensive item. It's really easy for her to get in and stun them, and that's really powerful together with the Riven and together with the Noriana, because you can always do ball delivery system. And I think that's the main point of pressure. While we have in Kog'Maw, that never actually like, scales off in the game, so it's pretty even between the AD carries, and we just outscale them on other roles. Yeah, great game from Kog'Maw as well for Tabs. And Tabs, I want to ask you, is the confidence that we saw from Alliance um, here in this game, is that a signal of the confidence that you guys have going into the rest of the season? Do you have that one-up versus Fnatic? Oh yeah, definitely. We had a bit of a slump, you could say. Like, we lost a couple games, but we pulled back really well. Like, our practice lately has been really good, and we know what we have to do to win the games right now. So as long as we just execute it correctly, I... We could even like not even drop a single game. Fragan, what is your vision on it? Uh, first off, is Fnatic the one you think you'll be facing in the playoff final? How do you see the rest of the standings going? And if so, how will that match go? Right now, we are the best two teams in Europe, so I would expect to be facing them in the finals. And it's a matter of who's actually going to prepare the best for, for the finals. Well, if it's a best of five that's this exciting, we're in for a treat. Thank you very much, and congratulations on that first place spot for Alliance once more. We're going to top off our red and blue elixirs, but when we come back, SK Gaming will take on the Super Hot Crew. Don't go anywhere. Nice. High five. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Yes. Nice. Good job, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> they go back. Oh, they go back. Jungle we'll actually get that kill, and now they turn towards Yellow Star will fall as well. And the Cataclysm are looking for Tab, he will flash away, and Cyanide is going to go down. Tab picks up that kill, there's an 